This is Allie. And this is David. And you're listening to For, For the, the Culture. Culture. I tell them, take a picture, man. It'll last longer. Hit the gas on them. Hit the dance on them. Take no chance on them. Get the cash on them. Flip it fast on them. Take off the mask on them. Show the world who you are. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's <laughs> D. Linton, David Linton, coming at you again with For the Culture. And today I have the other co-host <laughs> on the show. It is Miss Theta Pittman. Hi. <laughs> What's going on? Not much. How are you, David? I'm doing simply wonderful. Great. Well, y'all, I want to do. <clears throat> we're going to do an interview here with Theta because she's going to be one of the new hosts for the show. You've heard her now, I think, on two episodes. Two, yeah, two episodes. Two episodes, and you get to, you got to hear a little bit about her and her opinions. But now we're going to go deeper, so you can really get, get to the root. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Theta is a friend of mine. We met at a fashion at a at a photo shoot. Yeah, it was a photo shoot. You yeah. uh, you posted that you needed some models, and I was like, "Hey, I got you!" And I showed up, and yeah. here we are. We did the photo <laughs> shoot. She's a dope person, Thanks. amazing, amazing person. Thanks. I can't wait to really get into the meat of this interview and what we have to come. Y'all, we are having fun today. It is cold outside. It is cold. That's not fair. Yeah. Okay, because last <laughs> week I was in the Bahamas. No, not last week. Week before last, I was in the Bahamas and it was hot. Unbearably hot, but it was hot. And now I come back here and it's cold and right. I don't like it. I'm not ready. Right. My parents <laughs> talking about they're still wearing t-shirts back at home. In but, Texas? Yeah. Mm. But it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> we'll, we'll deal. So, Theta, so we're going to go ahead and jump into this interview, okay. and we want to ask you, just real quick, tell us who you are. Oh, dang, I hate that question. I know, right? That's the hardest question. I hate when people say that. So, tell me about yourself. Well, what do you want to know? All right. Um, my name is Theta. Um, I am married. I don't have any children. Um, currently serving in the military. As I mentioned before, I've been in for six years now. Um I'm a Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Gemini team. I'm a Gemini. Up. Hey. Gemini. Gemini season is literally the best. Uh, I don't know why we get all the slander. Probably because we're the best. But anyway, I'm People a Gemini. Just hate me. Right, facts. I'm a Gemini. My favorite color is purple. <laughs> we're going into colors here. <laughs> yeah, I don't really. <laughs> my favorite color is purple. I like long I like walks, long on, walks the on the beach. <laughs> my, my favorite movie is Stand By Me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> What is your favorite movie? I don't have one. You I don't? Have, I have so many, like, f there are so many good movies, it's hard for me to pick just one. Mm -hmm. But I think if I could pick, if I can narrow, narrow it down to two movies, I would probably have to pick Moonlight mm -hmm. and The Color Purple. Okay, I can rock with that. Yeah. See, for me, it's weird. My favorite movie, I would have to say, is Will Smith in Hitch. Will Smith in Hitch or Hitch? Well, Hitch, but it was Will Smith's Hitch. There's, there's like two other Hitch. Oh, movies. I didn't know that. Yeah, he's not okay. the only one that did ah, one called Hitch. Okay, okay. But that's why I say Will Smith and Hitch. Okay. But that's probably my favorite movie. I got other movies I like. Yeah. There, you know, you got the Five Heartbeats. Oh, of course. You got, and, and everybody yeah. tried to tell me the Temptations, but I still put the Five Heartbeats above the Temptations. I, I feel like they're kind of interchangeable. Nah, no, don't do that. Don't bit. do that. Just because just cause Leon's in both of them doesn't mean anything. <laughs> a little interchangeable. But most of the characters are in both yeah, of them. Yeah, facts. <laughs> <laughs> the Five Heartbeats ending is happier than the Temptations ending. Right, though. right, right, yeah, right. So. right. <laughs> But I think both of them are good movies. I got a lot of good movies. Out yeah, there. there's 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 too many. Like I just recently saw a movie called um, Murder on the Orient Express. Mm -hmm. Great movie. But I'm not gonna say it's my favorite. But it was a great movie. That one and Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Have mm -hmm. you seen that one? Three Billboards? No, I haven't. So good. You should see it. I was I was on the fence about watching it. It was really good. I there was a couple parts in there. That I was like not really sure what that has to do with movie, but okay. Mm -hmm. But overall, good piece of work. It was a good movie. See, I listen to a lot of movie reviews uh, and. Um, Black on Black Cinema is probably the one I mainly listen to. Oh, okay. Really good, really I've never good heard movie of that. review. Yeah, I'm, I'm sending it to you. It's really okay, good movie cool. review. I checked them out, and they didn't do that one. <laughs> they didn't do that movie, oh, but okay. um, I did hear some reviews on that movie, and it, it said it didn't. It wasn't cohesive. It didn't flow. So yes, there were some parts of it. I think the overall, like the big picture, was good, but mm -hmm. there were a couple pieces in there. That I'm like. That don't really fit, but all right, we'll go with it. <laughs> right, right, right. So, Theta. Yes. Where are you from? That is also a load. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right. So, I was born in Long Beach. Nope, not true. Yes, I was born in Long Beach, California. 
And um, I lived there up until 2002. So I was a, turning 11. Yeah, so I was 10 years old and I moved to Ohio, Mansfield, Ohio. You were turning 11 in 2002? Yes. I graduated high school in 2002. <laughs> <laughs> and I lived out there, though. I lived, I lived in Seal Beach, California. Okay. Which is just south of Long Beach. Okay, I don't remember much about Long Beach. Right. But, um, I lived uh, all over, not all over, but I lived in various cities in Southern California up until mm -hmm. 2002 when I moved to Ohio. Okay. So what do you claim? I kind of do a little bit of both. But mm -hmm. some people tell me I can't claim California anymore because I spent most of my adult life in Ohio. Mm -hmm. So... I just kind of claim both, whatever. I say, okay. I'm from Ohio, but by way of California. Explain that, and then it's a conversational piece. <laughs> <laughs> well, it worked. I left Texas when I graduated high school, and I never really went back. But I you can still claim it because you spent yeah. the majority of your life there. Right, right, yeah. right. I haven't gone back to California. I went back in 2015. I was there for a week, and I hated it. Really? Well, only because I was in Hollywood. My uncle, oh, had, yeah. but yeah, my uncle had a studio what, apartment Hollywood? in Hollywood. Uh, North, south, north, northwest. The one by um, the Hollywood. Uh, what is that theater? There's like a theater out there. North Hollywood. Yeah, where like the Walk of Fame mm -hmm. and all. That. I was over there, and my uncle had a studio apartment there, so I stayed with him for a week. And everything was really expensive. Everything was really crowded and traffic. And I was like, you know what? I need to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get out of here. Okay, so how did you grow up? Did you have any brothers and sisters? All right, so um, if I could describe my childhood in two words, they would be traumatic and confusing. But mm. yes, I did have brothers and sisters, or grew up with brothers and sisters. I have two sisters and one brother. So my brother and I lived in the same household. My oldest sister did not grow up in the same household as us, but mm. we grew up together. So we would see her here and there. I don't want to say here and there because I saw her a lot growing up. But like, um, she would come stay with us for a weekend, mm -hmm. two month, two weekends out of the month. Okay, every every month or something like that. But my younger sister, completely estranged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> traumatic and confusing. Yeah. Uh, parents, non-existent. Non-existent. Yeah. So my father passed away before I was born, mm -hmm. and my mother died when I was uh, six, nine, seven, yeah, six, six. So who old. raised you? My grandmother. Oh, your grandmother. Mm -hmm. My grandmother didn't raise me, but we, she's had a big impact yeah. on my life. Yeah. Um, my, my grandmother always raised me, though. Like, I, my, I don't have any recollection of my mom. My sister okay. does because she's older. But I believe, from what I can remember, my grandma has always raised me. And then once my mom died, my grandma adopted me and my brother. Okay. And went from there. Yeah. Confusing and traumatic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> confusing and traumatic. <laughs> so, outside of the military, what do you do? Oh, why do you ask me? What do you this? like to do? Like, what, where, where are your goals taking you? All right. So that is still something that I'm trying to figure out. Now, this period of my life, I like to call confusion <laughs> because it's, I don't know if everyone goes through this, but I'm kind of going through this period where I went through a, I went through a few years where I was like, I got this figured out. I know what I'm doing. I know what I want. And now I'm just like, yo, what are we doing? Like, what is our end goal? And so right now I'm just really trying to figure out what, exactly what that is because right now i'm in the military but i know the military is not the end all be all so i have to figure out what i'm going to do after that so right now i'm currently working on my bachelor's degree mm -hmm. trying to get a um my, my bachelor's in human resource management so um looking at using that you know once i graduate or graduate once i exit the military and looking at using that i'm also trying to step in as you know step into the podcasting world trying to get my feet wet there i did a personality test today uh what's the, the name i forget the name of it but it's the one where you take it and your result is like letters e v s p i know what you're talking yes. about yes. myers briggs i think yes, is the name of it. yes i did a myers briggs personality test i've taken it once before and i got the same results it said i was an entertainer and i was like literally there's nothing entertaining about me but apparently myers briggs you think i'm an entertainer right. so i was reading it and there's like a course that you can take where they kind of guide you and put you put you where you need to be in a way so i'm thinking about taking that course and kind of figuring out exactly how to use my strengths and how to use my weaknesses to better improve my life, I guess, so right. to say. So to answer your question, what do I do outside the military? I try to figure my life <laughs> I try to figure my life out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the most I can say. Remember my Myers Briggs says I was an ENFJ. What that means right now, I have to look it up. E N E N F J A or just ENFJ? ENFJ. Mine was ENFJ A. 
I don't know what the difference is. I don't either. But you're an entertainer too. Yeah. So that's yes. good. Okay. <laughs> also known also it's a, a smooth talking persuader. Oh. I don't think mine said all yeah, that. Yeah, he does. Oh, he does it? You didn't read it too. <laughs> I was reading it and I was kind of offended because it was like saying that we like to be the center of attention and that mm-hmm. it's all about us. And I'm like, I'm not like that at all. But maybe I am and I just don't know it. I don't think it's about us being wanting to be the center of attention. I but think that we, just we are. We are the center of attention. And we don't shy from it. Because some people, the second they become the center of attention, like, they oh, shut no, down. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And that's not us saying that we're the bomb, but I mean, hey, we're Gemini's. But I am. I mean, well, I, mean I am the bomb. <laughs> we're Gemini's. <laughs> I feel about myself like Machine Gun Kelly feels about himself. Okay, let's not talk about MGK. Let's not talk about MGK. So, how long do you think you're going to be in the military? Um, so, I just signed a contract for four more years. Mm-hmm. Um, so, depending on, really, my, my stint in the military, military excuse me, depends on my current education level slash status Mm -hmm. so the reason why i joined the military in the first place was to get my education Mm -hmm. so right now i have my bachelor's and if within these next four years i completed my master's and i'll be like okay i've done enough here it's time for me to go Mm -hmm. now i've also i'm also trying to do some things in the military as well so i'm just kind of i'm just trying to grab all these Mm -hmm. pieces and marry them together because it's not really working out right now but i'm trying (laughs) so with the human resources what is it you want to do with that with my human resources degree, the job I have right now in the military, I actually am doing that. Right. So with the experience I have, I feel like it should it should be a smooth transition into the civilian world. Should be. It's not. I, my, my my older sister did the same thing. I heard that it's really rough going from it's military different. to. I it's heard different. it's rough. But as far as the job goes, not necessarily dealing with the personalities and the people, but as far as the job goes, it should be a fairly smooth transition. My my goal with my degree is to work in a HR position for the the um the DOD if I okay. can. Yeah. So there's a position open, not open, but they have positions available in the job I'm currently sitting in. So they, which the job I'm in, they have locations in Langley. Langley, Virginia. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe in a couple of years, if I, everything's lined up, I can go ahead and apply for a position there and work my way up. Nice, nice, yeah. nice, nice. Okay, so we, uh, so those are your goals and everything. So with the podcasting, and and you want to do public speaking? I thought about it a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, I thought about being a um, a motivational speaker. Um, not. I don't know if my story is as compelling as Petra's, but I've thought about becoming a motivational speaker because, like I said, I have gone through a a lot in my life. And so I think that it would be cool to share my story. But then at the same time, I am a minimalist. I I tend to minimalize the things that I've gone through. Mm -hmm. So whenever I talk to people and I tell them, you know, my story and what I've gone through, they're sitting there with their jaw on the floor. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> didn't everyone, you lived this amazing yeah. life and when you just start talking about yeah, it, it's people like just blah blah it. blah and like what didn't everyone 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 didn't do that? No. Right? Oh. Like, oh, you didn't, you didn't Y'all didn't do, do that? that? Right. Oh, okay. You didn't get shot at back right. in the day? Like, <laughs> going to the club, getting shot right. at you don't remember that? like that didn't happen to you? Oh, okay, just me then. All right. I guess that was just clean. Right. right. So I I have thought about um about getting into it, but more specifically, my podcast, I've been thinking about getting into podcasting for young people who needed someone to be there for them that wasn't there for them. So I want to mm. be that person that I needed when I was going through whatever I was right. going through. Not to say that there weren't people there for me, but I needed a specific kind of person and that person. Maybe I just didn't know that person was there, but <laughs> I didn't find that person. So I felt like a lot of the struggles after... Let me let me make this very clear. After a certain point, you know, your decisions are your own. So after I guess age nineteen, mm-hmm. I needed somebody. <laughs> I needed somebody, and I did not have somebody. So I guess I would say that I want to be that person for any young people that are going through tough times and need, you know, got to make tough decisions and don't really know what to do, where to go. You know, I want to be that person. What I really admire about you is that you look at things in a way and in a manner that I don't see a lot of. A lot of women looking at things. Okay. And I'm not saying that all women look at things a certain way <laughs> or this, that. I'm saying that you you don't fit into a mold. Okay. You think things out the way you want to think them out. You put you put things in order the way you want to put them in order. I I don't I don't see that a lot right now. I feel like everyone is just trying to is hitting this revolving door of just doing what everybody everyone else, else is, is doing. doing. Mm-hmm. Because I think that you have been harping on this story. 
I want to talk about it, David. So we are going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Yes, I'm so excited. All right. So I'm going to let you explain what it is to everybody. So (laughs) this story happened months ago, but for some reason it just bothers me and I need to get my opinion out about it. All right. So the Missouri duck boat accident, if you guys are not clear, a family traveled up to Bronson, Missouri. They went on, they went to like some little resort tour thing or whatever. And there was a, a little duck boating tour ride that they can do. Family of nine, I believe, right? I think, yeah, nine members. Mm-hmm. And um, unfortunately, everyone except for two of the family members passed away on this duck boat ride. Now, this is a tragic story. It is very tragic. My issue with it is, at what point does the victim take part in the events? So, mind you, before they got on the boat, they were told that there was a storm coming and that the boat could only handle X number of feet of waves. Mm-hmm. And they were expecting waves higher than what the boat could handle. Yet they chose to get on the boat anyway. While on the boat, the conductor, whomever, whatever they're called, told them that there were life jackets on the boat, but they're not going to need them. (laughs) I think there was one more thing. No, yeah, number three, they were also told that they were, yeah, they were told the storm was coming. So my issue with it is there were four adults and five children. Four adults and five children. Out of those four adults, not a single one said, hey, let's put life, bo- life jackets on these kids anyway. Like, the, the youngest child was one years old. The mom was carrying the baby. One-year-old child, no life jacket. All right. I can't swim. And even if I was Michael Phelps, I'm still going to put on a life jacket because swimming in a pool and swimming in choppy water are completely different things. Right. So my issue is yes it is very sad that these people lost their lives but at one point at what point does the victim take responsibility in this situation because if you ask me had they a chosen not to get on the boat or b chosen to wear life jackets they probably would all still be alive right and that's all i wanted to say about that you finally got it i finally got it out out. (laughs) but i know i think you're absolutely right though because I think that we always are trying to blame a company, blame a a a a a, a being or a superior being. I'm gonna say superior being or a, a bigger, yeah, the big man, the big the man, man for things that you could have you could have easily. She, every adult in that situation had complete control over the situation until they didn't. Right. And now, no, no, once once they no longer have control, now it's someone else's fault. Nah, it's a Groupon. You can come back another day. Nah. You had complete control. Hey, no, you know what? No, nah, this storm is coming. We not, we not gonna do this today, y'all. Let's go do something else. Mm-hmm. Let's go swim in the pool in the hotel or something. But no, you guys chose to do this. You chose not to wear life jackets, and unfortunately, this is a result of it. Very sad. It's very sad. I'm this not is a saying, very sad situation. I'm not saying it's not, but at what point do we put the blame on the victim? Not blame on the victim. Does the victim hold responsibility? I'll say that. There's a comedian. His name is Bill Burr, okay. and he is probably. He, his mindset is insane, but he believes that stupid people should be, should die. Like, like, <laughs> like, like, literally, like, like natural selection. He, right. belie- he believes that, like, Agreed because to an extent, right, to an extent. Like with me, I don't, I don't understand why I should receive a ticket for not wearing my seatbelt. I don't get that. Why, why am I getting a ticket for not wearing my seatbelt? My seatbelt isn't. Stopping anybody else true. from being hurt. It's right. stopping me from, from being, being hurt. hurt right. right. So, so how are you give me a ticket for wearing my seat? Be- I I don't get that either. Because let's say you were to get into an accident, and heaven forbid you're ejected from your car. So there, he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. That's the, that's literally the end of it. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't go <laughs> it doesn't go any farther than that. Funny thing, I was in um London going to a, a bus tour, and they had seatbelts on the bus, and so I put my seatbelt on. And these guys were kind of like making fun of me. They're like, oh, do we have to wear our seatbelts? I was like, well, no, you don't have to. And they're like, oh, well, why are you wearing one? I was like, let's say this bus gets into it. Let's say we get into a car accident. And let's say you guys get ejected for it. The first thing they're going to ask you is, were you wearing a seatbelt? You're going to say no. Then they're going to say, were seatbelts provided? And then you're going to say yes. And then you lose all the money. You're not going right. to get any money. Right. <laughs> I'm thinking about the money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get to the shmoney. <laughs> That's why Greyhound has those seatbelt signs on there, all the buses now. So people who ride Greyhound mm. buses, there's not many those were in accidents. I haven't worn a gray, uh, worn. I haven't ridden in a Greyhound bus since, ooh, the first time I came to Germany. Really? Yeah, 2012. Yep. I was going from Savannah 
to because I couldn't afford a plane. I was going from actually I went from tech school to Savannah, and then I took a bus, and then I took a bus from Savannah to Baltimore, and then caught the flight here. 2007, I took a Greyhound from Maryland to Texas. That's a long ride. That was a three day ride. Oh man, three days on a bus. Dang. That was the last time yeah, I took a bus. I wouldn't have done it no more after that. And I, and it was cool. I mean, it was a cheap way to go. Yeah. I wanted to have a certain amount of money when I got back yeah. to Texas. And I was like, I'll do. I'll just take the bus. If time is not a concern for you, then taking a Greyhound, Megabus, what have you, is definitely the way to go. But I care about my time. Right. So, I, you know what? I'll just cough up a couple extra dollars and fly. Right. I, ain't got I, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't taken a bus since 2007. Yeah, I haven't taken a That is crazy. I haven't, no, I lied. I did take a bus to Spain a couple years ago, but I'll never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I will never do that again. So, Theta. What's up? You auditioned for America's <laughs> Next Top Model. I did. <laughs> How was that In process? 2012. Um, so, okay. So, let me give you a little bit of background. So when America's Next Time Model came out, uh, I think I was in either middle school or starting my freshman year of high school. I don't really remember, but I don't think I started watching it for real until like the third season. Yeah, it started in 2003. Okay, so I didn't start watching it for real until the third season, which had Eva on it, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really like started watching it. And my Sunday school teacher at the time was encouraging me to get into modeling because she knew I wanted to do it. So she always encouraged me to get into it. And... <laughs> And it, I was so obnoxious. <laughs> I was so obnoxious with it. When I, by the time I hit high school, my high school was huge. We had these really long hallways. Mm -hmm. And I would walk down the hall with my fake Louis Vuitton purse. And my <laughs> hair <laughs> my hair would be straight. And I would be strutting, doing my bottle walk down the hall. And then the wind's blowing my hair. I was so obnoxious. I don't know how I, don't know how I had friends. But <laughs> I was just so obnoxious. And then anytime I would go to the city like Columbus. Columbus is like a big, quote unquote, big city. Or Cleveland. I would act like I was going on a go see. And it was just. I was so wow. I was so ridiculous about it but you know whatever so my Sunday school teacher passed away when I was about 14 mm -hmm. and you know that was devastating for me because she I was really close with her and I was like you know what I'm not gonna do this I'm you know modeling is whatever I'm not into it and then um some years went by lots of years and uh 2012 comes 2012 I'm living in Savannah at the time with my grandparents and I was at her neighbor's I was at my grandma's neighbor's house and I walked in and right on the television screen was open casting call at Savannah Mall on this day at this time. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's do it. So I think it was two days later or whatever. I um, put my little outfit on, told my aunt I was going out there, drove out there. And um, my aunt came out there with me and we took our little headshots with my aunt's phone <laughs> and went to Walmart and printed them out and, and filled out the giant packet that they want you to fill out and right. did a little walk and took a couple pictures and that was that i didn't get anything no one called me or nothing like that <laughs> <laughs> i didn't get too far with it well you're still modeling today i'm tr i'm trying i do a little some some here and there just a little some some okay okay so when i was here before my training manager was also into photography mm -hmm. so he would take pictures of us i think i took i think i did a couple of shoots with him we did one which we took like a page from, um, what was it, America's Next Time Model. We did the Seven Deadly Sin shoot, mm -hmm. which was really cool because we had these um, transfer cases. You know what transfer cases yes. are, right? We used transfer cases, and he shot us from above, mm -hmm. and each each of us girls had different themes. And oh, my nice. theme was yeah, my theme was greed. I had this this black dress, and I had these black gloves and fake money all over me. It was really fun. <laughs> it was really, it was really fun. It was a fun shoot, and we did a couple other shoots. And then now that I'm back, David, you've shot me once before, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna shoot some more. Okay. Okay. We got so many things you could possibly be doing out here for modeling. You just got to get into it, especially if you're still here. If you get back to the States, there's always things. Yeah. Then your podcast. I just got to get, get out of my head. I get into my head and I'm like, I look at all these other like really beautiful women. I'm like, yo, man, they killing me. So I just don't even, I'm not even bother with it. Well, you are a beautiful woman. Thank you. And you, and I'm, if everybody doesn't know, Theta's hair is just... <laughs> Is a lot of it. <laughs> she has a lot. Picture a lion, hair. and that is me. <laughs> I remember when I was little, whenever I would get my, because I've always had a lot of hair, whenever I would get my hair blow dried, I would just, this little face and like all, all this hair. <laughs> that might be a theme for a shoot. You know, we might Let's do, do it. Like I'm that. so down. I'll blow this out. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start, shift over into the culture. Okay, let's bit. do it. So, because I see what I really like about. To, you're different than Petra. Okay. And what I like about our interview is that we get to talk about your opinion 
and how you see things. Okay. That's why, like I said, I really admire that about you. So I want to bring up the Kanye West situation going on right okay. now. So if everybody doesn't know, uh, within the last few days, Kanye West decided to jump on Instagram and Twitter and and call out Nick Cannon, Drake, and Tyson, Tyson Beckford about having said they have slept with his wife, right. Kim Kardashian. For those who don't know who Kanye West's wife is, <laughs> I don't think anybody in the world doesn't, doesn't know, know who Kanye West's wife is. But so, what is your opinion on? this situation my opinion on this situation is i can understand kanye's frustration as far as drake goes because anybody saying that they had sex with my partner and you didn't we have an official problem mm -hmm. even if you did have sex with my partner why are you talking about it now like you know but what did saying? drake ever actually say he had sex with her i or? don't know where that came because from because everything he's just saying that drake has never denied it from what i can gather it sounds like Kanye is upset because it sounds like Drake is insinuating that he may have had sex with Kim Kardashian. That's mm -hmm. what that's what I can gather. I don't know 100%. But I feel like Kanye, you cannot control what people say. You can't. If somebody wants to say they had sex with your wife, that's what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. You as a man need to be secure enough in yourself and your relationship to be able to deal with that. But at the same time... You also have to understand who you're getting involved with. We all know how Kim Kardashian became famous. She became famous because, you know, she leaked, or she didn't, but her one of her sex tapes leaked. Did she? We Did don't she? know. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know that. But she had a sex tape, um, and it leaked, and so now this has been her stamp of fame. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean that that gives people the right to defend, to you know talk about her in that manner no it doesn't mean that but at the same time kanye needs to understand that this will potentially happen right i feel like anybody in the music industry music not even the music industry but anybody in the the industry has a potential of somebody saying oh yeah man i screwed your girl like you know what i'm saying like you just have to be able to to deal with it and going on Instagram, quote unquote, calling people out is not the way to deal with it. If you have an issue with Drake, you need to call Drake and speak to Drake. You have an issue with Nick Cannon, call Nick and speak to them. Same with Tyson Beckford. I don't think that going to social media <clears throat> with a situation as sensitive as that is the way to deal with it. Right. That's how I feel about that. Here's my situation with it. I, I as, a, as a man and as a husband, I would not want anybody to say they have slept with my wife in the public eye. They would, I, do want, I don't want that. Right. And no one, I, no I one wants that. Get that. No one wants that. Now, here's, here's the other side of that. Mm -hmm. Also, my wife is a private person. My wife isn't on Instagram. Isn't, or she is, but she isn't active, active yeah. on Instagram, Twitter. She's not on Twitter. And she has a small group of friends that she keeps to. Your wife... Has it's twenty, 20 something million, million followers. followers. She's constantly posting nude self pictures of herself. People are constantly talking, talking about, about her. her. And you are in the industry. Therefore, being in the industry, you don't have a say mm -hmm. in what people say about your wife, what they do with her images, or anything now, like that. If someone comes and says something to her, if then someone comes the and 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 disrespects her to her face or to you mm -hmm. or I get that mm -hmm. but you don't understand how many millions of people are on podcasts just like this mm -hmm. one or on or on Twitter talking bad about you or your wife mm -hmm. but you're calling these three people out because they have a platform mm -hmm. like you said talk to them in mm -hmm. private that's what that conversation is for mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense for you to be up in arms about all this i mean i understand you being upset but i don't understand why he's upset with nick cannon because i i watched the interview that i presume he's upset about and i don't even know who nick cannon was talking to he was he was being interviewed by somebody but apparently nick cannon and kim kardashian dated mm. years 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 before and um he was pretty much just talking about how um he had introduced them. He introduced Kanye and Kim. That's what he was saying. He was saying he introduced them at one point at some event. And then another time, Kim threw him a birthday party uh, somewhere in, a, I think he said Melrose or something like that. She threw him a birthday party. Kanye was there. They, he, he introduced them again and pretty much just went on to talk about that. There was no nowhere in there that he was, did he say he had sex with her? 
lead on to the fact that he nowhere in there was he disrespectful from what I could hear. Um, unless there was more to the interview that right. you know we didn't hear, and we, then there may be. There may be. I don't know, but if you have an issue with that person, you need to call that person. And then Nick responded on his Instagram too, being petty. He made a video. <laughs> the thing about Nick Cannon, I I like Nick Cannon. I do too. I really like Nick Cannon. I respect Nick Cannon, his work ethic, and everything he's done. Now, Nick Cannon has been out here sleeping with people since Jump Street. Mm -hmm. Since he was on, what, what did he come out Nickelodeon. on? Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. He's been doing this since Nickelodeon. He's been private about it, though. Yes. Like, I didn't even know he oh, had he a whole, ain't been that private. I didn't know he had a whole other baby. I didn't yeah. even, I didn't know about that. He ain't that. been that private about oh, well, it. Nick Cannon, Nick Cannon and Models been under have, a been, rock. has been the running thing forever. Okay, maybe I just been under a rock then. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's, it's, it's crazy, but now... You cannot be upset. Oh, you can be. I'm, I can't. I can't say how someone should feel about anything. But you being upset about this situation to where you will publicly talk about this, yeah. it seems like you are taking a page from the Kardashian book again and just trying to rile some things mm -hmm. up, just so people are talking about you. Still. Yeah, that's what it seems like to yeah, me. Yeah, because. Because how do the Kardashians, when they're ready to sell something, what do they do? They, they go do a new it. shoot. Yeah. yeah, Do a new, new shoot, shoot or they have some drama happen and yeah. then all of a sudden our new it. product is coming yeah. out. <laughs> what happened with Kanye when his album was coming out? He had all this drama the happen. MAGA, yeah, the MAGA yeah, stuff. The MAGA yeah. stuff. He went on uh, uh, um, TMZ. All that stuff yeah. happened. Then the album dropped. And now um, 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 Chris, Car Chris um, Jenner, Jenner mm -hmm. Is his manager now? Oh, that is right. Yes, mm -hmm. she is his mm -hmm. manager now. Mm -hmm. It is wild. So now your whole—I'm a Kanye West fan. I am a diehard Kanye West fan when it comes to the music. But the Kanye behind the music, I can't rock yeah. with. Yeah, I cannot rock with this new Kanye. I mean, even old Kanye. Like there's certain things I couldn't rock with with old Kanye. He's too cocky. He's this. Yeah. He's that. I mean, that was cool. I mean, I'm cocky. I'm this. I'm that. I'm, <laughs> I, I saw myself in this man, you know? Gemini's, you know, yeah, Gemini and Gemini. Is a Gemini. I, I, I saw myself Dang, in this man, but at the same time, Gemini. you got to understand that the things, you, the things you say have consequences. Mm -hmm. And he literally at, positioned himself to be a champion of the black people. When Bush was in office, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you are you are fighting your own people. Yeah. So I don't have the sympathy for that. I don't. I don't really know what to say about Kanye because I feel like the person he is now is attributed to a number of things in his life. Like Kanye has experienced some trauma over the past couple of years. Who hasn't? Exactly. That doesn't give you an excuse to be right <laughs> everybody experiences trauma yeah. everybody experiences experiences so many different things yeah and even though yours might not be this or yours might be that it depends on how you deal with it yeah he is not dealing with it in the way he should but also to give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt everyone also doesn't deal with their trauma publicly you know right. what i'm saying so i'm not I'm, I'm, that could also contribute to the way he handles. But he didn't deal. That's my thing. He didn't deal with it publicly. He left the the, the he left social media. He left the public yeah, eye for, for a, a whole while. year. Yeah, and then came back talking about MAGA. And then came back and then aired things publicly. Yeah, that's what true. What did you do in that year? Yeah, nothing. Were you not working towards? He his, worked on his six song album, David. <laughs> that's what he, he did. He was in the hospital. We know that. He had his breakdown. We know that. He had a. Then you had a whole year. He had liposuction. To to he had liposuction. Yeah, he had liposuction. That's, Talked about that's it. ridiculous. Yo, what's up with these men right now? I'm not even gonna say about men. What's up with these people right now with all this, all these different Surgery. types of surgeries? You got you got Safari getting new hair. You got uh, Tiger Woods getting new hair. You got you got him doing liposuction. What is going on? Be I mean, yourself. I don't. I'm not hating on the whole hair thing. Like if if. If male pattern baldness makes you feel insecure and you can afford a hair transplant, then go ahead and get you a hair transplant. Okay, I'll give him that, but you could also go bald. You could. Or Michael you could, Jordan did it. Or you could go bald, but not everybody has the confidence. Like, 
you know what I'm saying? Like women, we're going through this new trend where we cutting all our hair off, and I can tell you every single day I contemplate cutting my hair off, but I don't have the confidence to wear <laughs> to go around with no daggone hair. And I know I don't, so I ain't gonna put myself through it or my husband because he the one going that's gonna have to suffer because I'm gonna cry about it every right. day. I miss my hair. Well, you shouldn't have cut it off. Is what he was. Is what he well, tell us about your husband. We haven't talked about him. My husband, his name is Montague. He's from the south side of Chicago. Um, he looks like Chance the Rapper. <laughs> he really does. He looks like Chance the Rapper. But I'll tell you a little bit about how we met. So if you ask me how we met and you ask him how we met, you'll get two different stories. But my story is the truth. <laughs> my story is the truth. All right. So I PCS to Masao, Japan, 2015. And um, so my the career field I have is a large umbrella. There's a bunch of different jobs under it. So at the time, he was working at the fitness center and I was working at the dining facility. Mm-hmm. So I remember um, I had been there a couple of months, if that. And I remember I was working on the sandwich grill and I saw him come in and I was like, oh, he's kind of cute. <laughs> and um, he walked up to the grill so I could take his, his sandwich order. And I was like, you know, what can I get you? And this deep voice came out of this person. Now, mind you, my, okay, so my husband's younger than me. So when I met him, he looked a lot younger than what he does now. Mm-hmm. So this deep voice came out and it completely caught me off guard. And so I was like, oh, okay. And um, so I think that was our first interaction. And then I found out that people from the gym were coming to work at the dining facility. And he mm-hmm. was one of them. And I had worked with him one other time and he was really quiet. And then I found that I was going to be working on the night shift 12 hours. And I was working, supposed to be working with one airman. But at the last minute, it got switched to working with my husband. And um, so <laughs> I came in for the 12-hour shift. And my name was um, Shaw. My maiden name is Shaw. His maiden name is Pittman, obviously. And I was like, hey, Pittman, are you ready to do this? And he's kind of looked at me and I was like, okay, <laughs> all right. So we worked our first night together. We didn't really talk much, but I, you know, you work 12 hours with someone. I'm not just going to not talk to you. So we started to talk to each other more and more and more. And then, you know, I started to get to know a little bit more about him. And then he like started to flirt with me low key. And so I kind of brushed it off. Like whatever, he's bored. We here for 12 hours. He trying to entertain himself. So, um, finally his flirting started to become more and more, you know, um, what's the word current like no not current consistent he started doing more consistently so one day i was like do you really like me or you know he's like no i really like you and i was like oh no no you don't you don't really like me (laughs) you don't like me and at the time i outranked him and um so that was a a thing for me i outranked him and i was a shift leader so i was like you know i don't want to cross those lines so that's what i told him i was like oh no because you know these reasons and you're younger than me and he was like, okay, but he wasn't, he wasn't trying to hear it. He was still, right. he was still shooting the shots. So one day I asked my friends, I asked a couple of my friends and I was like, yeah, I, I actually really like this guy. And they're like, well, I mean, give it a try. If you like him for you guys really like each other and you guys end up dating, see if they'll, you know, move you off his shift or whatever. So, um, the staff results came out and I found that I had made staff. Mm. I got promoted to E5, and we hung out that weekend that I got promoted, and we've just been inseparable ever since. Okay. So if if he asks you, I mean, if you ask him, he'll say that I tried to get with him, and he turned me down. <laughs> that's that's what <laughs> that's what he'll say, <laughs> which is not that true. Old. I feel old because I met my wife on MySpace. Oh, MySpace. Yeah, back in 2005. <laughs> I miss that site, kind of. It's so different now. It is. It's like a music site. It's like site. a music yeah. site. Yeah, weird. <laughs> weird. <laughs> but, um, but marriage. Marriage is very hard. Marriage is very difficult. Yo. Um, my wife and I took five years to get to where we are now, Yo. to where we are happy and we are moving forward. And it was it was a lot of battles and fights and moving out and moving back in yeah. and all these different things. I wish I was prepared for, for how hard marriage is. I don't think people tell you. See, everybody tells you that marriage is it's beautiful. Great. Oh, Everything God. is great. No. They don't tell you that marriage is a fight and a struggle daily. Them first couple years, I mean, we're only on year two and I think we're finally starting to climb over that hill, mm-hmm. but them first couple years that you're married are monumental like mm-hmm. them first two years are really tell you if y'all gonna make it or not right if you ask me no i don't think so because if it came down to our first two years we wouldn't be together no right i'm now. saying like y'all made it past that point though is what i'm saying we didn't no we we broke up at that point and then we got back together then we broke up then we got back did you guys together. get remarried or y'all no, just, no we never got remarried uh, okay. we never really completely divorced, divorced. Okay. I mean, we, we, we separated and we got back and we all these different things but i think it got to a point to where i was messing up 
And then we were we also came into a place where we came into the marriage with expectations yeah. of what marriage but should be. But you guys be. didn't voice your expectations, did you? We no, we we, we didn't voice them, no. And mm -hmm. I think the, our problem was that we had them in, in it anyway. Mm -hmm. I think if we had gone into the marriage cause after we after this this um this last year, if we, we went back into our marriage to a place where we're like, hey, Let's go from scratch, mm -hmm. going from blank mm -hmm. slate. This is what I need from you. Mm -hmm. This, this is, is what, and what do you need from mm -hmm. me? And we went from there, and now we are, this is probably the happiest we've ever been. I feel like we're going through that right now. Now, so me, my husband and I, we are demographically, like, from complete opposites of the spectrum. I was born, uh, raised in single, single family, uh, single parent household. And he was raised with both of his parents. His mm -hmm. parents are still married 25 years next next year. Very much in love. So he grew up with that. So he grew up knowing this is what I want. I want to be married. Mm -hmm. So he is, he'll be 23. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> He's a lot younger than me. But <laughs> you born in the 90s? 95. Oh, my God. <laughs> his birthday is this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but he grew up knowing that he wanted to be married whereas me i grew up you know okay it's a possibility but always not really you know like you know that's extremely unrealistic for me and my personality i just don't believe that anyone will want to deal with me for the rest of, <laughs> for the rest of their life but so we came into this and i you know i'm thinking as an independent woman and he's thinking trying to be my husband and you know what i'm saying so we're he comes in with the expectations from what he saw with his parents and I don't have any expectations per se. So we kind of did that. We had a, we had a really hard time and I feel like we are now where you and your wife are, where we're like, you know what, let's stop fighting with each other and start fighting for each other mm -hmm. and go forward from there. And I feel like we, you know, we definitely had that separation point, but we're, we're past that. I, I pray we're past that. And we got, we, we start going to church together too. Mm -hmm. So, I think it also needs to surround yourself with other people, people that are, are married, married and yeah. are, are working through the same things. Having single friends is no bueno. No, you can't do that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I mean, I have a couple single friends, but at the same time, they're not people I hang out with all the time. Right. And they're not, they don't think the same. And like my grandma, I love her to death. I, oh, I love my grandma to death. She's my whole heart, my whole soul. But that woman's been married like three or four times. The running joke from what I told is who she married to this week. <laughs> That's what I've been told. So she's been married, married and divorced th two or three times. So I love her to death, but I don't talk to her about my marriage because she's not the best person <laughs> to give me advice on that. But I mean, it, it, like you said, it, just take, it takes the counseling. It takes people yeah. to sit down and talk to you. Going to counseling, yes. having having a therapist, having someone licensed yeah. to sit there and talk, because people always have this negative connotation about therapy. Man, I love. I wish I would have had therapy sooner in my life. Yo, I'm <laughs> telling you, because you got to think you got, you have somebody who is unbiased, there, unbiased, unbiased, and just listens listen to, to you, you and gives you. They don't have to give you advice. They just let you talk and let you figure it out yourself. But you can just talk to somebody and put everything out there. And they are legally obligated to tell nobody. <laughs> nobody the dark secrets that you have. It's the best thing. It's crazy. I wish I would have had it sooner. <laughs> I know. But yeah, therapy is definitely... Um, it's, a, it's frowned upon in the black community for some reason. And I really don't understand it. Because... Okay, so I, this is my opinion. I feel like it makes people feel like it makes them look weak. Okay. Because if you have to go to somebody else to take care of the problems you have in your home, think about it. When you were growing oh, yeah. up, you were you, like, our business stay in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Every, yep. All my business stays stay right in here in the house. That's we true. deal with it here. Yeah. We don't take it out. And people still, people, even people who go to therapy still kind of say things like that. Yeah. Like they're not getting everything. They're not, it's not clicking yet. I don't have a problem talking to anybody mm -hmm. about anything i am i'm not an open book but you might get the first 10 chapters yeah quick, you know what i mean yeah. you can get the first 10 chapters and so i'm i'm there to talk to people about what i've gone through what i've dealt with the the, the struggles i've had the the celebrations i've had and i think that since i'm able to do that therapy has always worked for me mm -hmm. and i i went through um Therapy for PTSD. I went through therapy for marriage. I went through therapy just general just therapy. Just for yourself, yeah. Yeah. I, and if it wasn't for that, I don't know where I would be right now. I wish I, I think that if I would have had therapy as a child, 
I don't think that I would have made a lot of the decisions and mistakes I made as an adult because Facts. a lot of the decisions and mistakes I made were out of anxiety or insecurity or unsureness. You know what I'm saying? So I think if I would have been able to deal with that at, at an early age, I probably wouldn't, you know. Facts. Facts. <laughs> facts. So. What's up? There's a lot going on in the world still right now. There's always going to be a lot going there on. There is. <laughs> I, and I don't even like, I don't even want to talk about it all. You know, we got Bill Cosby doing his sentencing right now. Bill Cosby. Then at the same time, Northwest, Kanye West's daughter just did her first fashion show. Uh, hey, okay, okay, can parents, we call that a something. fashion show, though? Yeah, I don't know what it was, but let me say something to everybody. <laughs> parents. Or people who write for this don't 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 go out and just say that somebody is slaying. Don't the hype way. them. Don't, don't do hype. it. I mean, you hype hype, hype your her, kids. Hype kids at the but, event, but don't go write an article and say that the yeah, little girl slayed. Because I'm gonna go look at it <laughs> and I'm gonna talk about the little girl because the little girl almost fell down during the turn. <laughs> but I mean, but she's a child, so we expect that, and that's cute, and that's okay. But E News or whoever wrote that, right. it don't need to be don't on my. Do it doesn't need to be on my news. Feed. Don't do that. That needs to be in your family video. Yeah, you like, show oh, at, look show what she did. Holidays. Look how cute it is. Yes, it was very cute. But you don't need to write an article about right. it, right? Because there's other young child that are models. literally slaying the runway, yes. literally yes. slaying, <laughs> giving some of these high paid models a run for their money, right? And so, I, so I just, I don't, I don't. So, but there's so many things going on in the world. We have. The cold weather coming, Mm-mm. which I'm not, which I'm not about. I'm not. Well, actually, I am. Okay, I do like cold weather. I don't mind I like cold the weather. Clothes. I'm just not ready for it. I like it. the clothes for cold weather. No, like, yeah, cold weather clothes are nice. Tim, yeah, got true. my jacket. You know what I'm saying? Hats, I'm good. Like yeah, I like that. That's true. Like I'm, I don't, I'm, I don't like shorts unless they're basketball shorts. Like I don't like to wear shorts, and if it's too hot, I'm not. I don't want to wear pants. That's funny that you say that because where was I going? Somewhere this summer, my office wanted to go somewhere, and I was like, I don't have any appropriate shorts. Because <laughs> all the shorts they make for women are underwear, so I don't have anything. Yeah, especially that's... coming out right now. Yes, they're all. Yo, fashion right now is insane, and everybody's like dressing the exact the same. exact same way. I try to you know be a little different if I can, but it's really hard. Everything is the same. It's really hard. This, uh, where was I? The Bahamas. My sister, oh, my sister. My sister shops at Fashion Nova, and I always give her crap for it. And <laughs> <laughs> I always give her crap for it. But her clothes are cute. They are cute. And I always give her crap because I'm like, well, what if you see someone else wearing the same thing? She's like, so? I don't care. I'm like, well, I'm glad you don't because I remember specifically, I would never forget this. It was when I was here um, a couple years ago. I bought this dress from H&M and it was like one of them funky pattern dresses. And I was like, this is cute. I have some shoes I can wear with it. Bomb. And I wore it out to this club and this girl came in wearing the exact same dress. <laughs> wearing the wow. exact same dress. She gave me the worst look and then walked out. I'm like, oh, it's my fault that we're wearing Oh, she this. left? She left. Oh, you good. Yeah. <laughs> you good. I wasn't hey. worried about her being there no way, but she walked in, looked at me, rolled her eyes at me, and then left. I'm like, oh, all hey, right. Well. I'm, I'm going to still have fun. You paid to get in <laughs> right. here and left. That's not on me. <laughs> right. So I wouldn't have nothing to do with that. Yeah. Okay, Theta, you ready for your Spitfire session? What? Yeah, I didn't tell you about this. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a few different, a, a, just a one or the other. Oh. And you choose. All right. You don't get to think about it. All I right. just want to, off the top of your head, what do you choose? <laughs> oh, God. Okay. What do you choose? All right. Martin or Fresh Prince? Fresh Prince. Oh, I like that. See, you just quick. See, that's how it works. You're just quick with it. I'm a Martin fan, but I like Fresh Prince too. Okay. So I, I got to go ahead and go with that. Okay. Kanye West or Jay Z's music Jay-Z. only? Jay Z. Vanilla or chocolate ice cream? Vanilla. Hip hop or R and B? R and B. Mercedes or BMW? Mercedes. Shorts or sweatpants? Or dresses or sweatpants? Dresses. Uh. Ah. <laughs> it depends. What are we doing? Where are we going? Uh. Just, just in general. Just in general. Ah. Sweatpants. Okay, that's your spitfire. I'm not even going to go too much for it. Oh, that was, that was uh, fun. We can go on for a while. That, we can go. We can go for a while. Okay, what else you got? Okay, you want to go back? To yeah, it? let's okay. do it. So we got uh, Drew Hill or Jodeci. Drew Hill. What's your favorite Drew Hill song? Mm. Mm. I oh, I can hear it, but I can't think of the name of Mine it. Mine was Five Steps. I think Five Steps was my favorite. That then after that was Tell Me. Tell that's me. That's it. That's that's the one. That's want. the one I like. I like that one. I like that one. I couldn't okay. think of the name of yeah. it. Those were my probably my favorite ones right there. Jo- yeah, I don't know a lot of songs by Jodeci. Really? I don't think I do. No, you probably don't. No. You probably over, too, 
too young for a lot of the Jodeci, though. I was born in 91, yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, so, Denzel Washington or Will Smith? Ooh. Mm. Dang. That's really hard to say because Will Smith literally acted in a movie by himself. I Am Legend, he was mm-hmm. by himself with, with, for the majority of that movie. But Denzel... Also, you also got to look at Fences. Fences, that was pretty oh, much Fences all. Oh, Fences was amazing. Okay, that's another one of my favorite movies. Okay, so let me tell you why I like <laughs> Fences so much. Sorry, we've gotten off. All right, so Fences was a play first, and then mm, they made it into a movie. Right. And I have not mentioned it on the pod, but I, um, at my last base, was an active stage manager. Mm. So I love words. So Fences solely focused on the words because yeah. there wasn't a whole lot of action going on. And one of my friends was like, oh, I fell asleep on it. And I was like, how did you fall asleep on that? Oh, you like words? There's I like another words. movie you need to see. It's called Closer. Okay. And you, I, think, I think that's Natalie Portman and Clive Owen, I believe that's okay. who's in it. I'll look that up. But one of my friends was like, oh, yeah, I fell asleep on it. And I was like, how did you fall asleep on it? She's like, it was boring. I was like, you got to pay attention to the words. And she's like, that's the stage manager in you. I'm like, maybe it is. But that was phenomenal. That was great. Anyway, okay, so let's see. Denzel or Will. Mm. I'm going to say Will because he can make me laugh, but he can also be serious. Okay. I'm sorry, Denzel. I love you if you're listening. <laughs> okay, here's then you gotta come at you again then. Okay. With the same Will Smith or Michael B. Jordan. Will Smith. Okay. Michael B. Jordan just fine. That's not, that's not to say he's not a good actor, but if I would be picking him, it's just cause he's fine. Michael B, if you're listening, slide in my DMs. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so yeah, I say like I said, closer is a movie you need to if you okay. like words, closer I'll and check there's another that one movie out. called Brick. Those two movies, okay. if you like words, those are movies for you. I'll check those out. Speaking of movies, what what genre of movies do you like the most? Anything. Anything. I like, um, I'm kind of starting to get away from rom-coms because they're all starting to be the same thing. The same with horror. Mm. I'm starting because they're all starting to be the same thing. But I like, I like dramas. Uh, I like action sometimes. Mm-hmm. I like thrillers. I really like thrillers and suspenses. Yes, those, me too. I like those. Uh, let's see. Romance. I uh, can't really think of it. The only really good romance movie I can think of is Titanic. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can't even go that way. But see, for me, I like I like rom coms. I like rom coms. I like action. I like thriller. My wife is an action an action film person because mm. she doesn't really care. She she wants to be entertained. Mm-hmm. I got you. Got to break the movie down for me. Yeah. I need to know why this person is wearing that color shirt <laughs> in this room. Why they are facing that direction. Why the sun <laughs> is rising in the west instead of the east. east. I need to know these things. <laughs> and if I'm watching it, that's all the things that I'm seeing. And I break down movies that way. If you watch, if you like that, you will like Murder on the Orient Express. Really, you will like that because every piece of that movie means something. Mm-hmm. So you will like like that Get one. Out. Like Get Out was an amazing. Get Out movie was good, but it was one of the movies I can only watch once. There's a couple movies that I can only watch them one time because mm. it just makes my skin crawl see and that was, that was 12 years of slave oh movie. yeah i can only watch Yo, that i can once. only watch it one time i was mad i'm cussing people yeah, out walking out of uh-uh. the movie theater i can't watch that. <laughs> I was like i, I seen it said, once oh. and that was enough Django. i can watch that one a few times yeah, it, it was it was funny movie. and it was funny movie. we went at the end so it was cool yeah. <laughs> but i think there's so many different um and that was uh there's so many different types of movies out there that you can break down like that and everybody always says oh you need to go back and watch this you, you need to go know, back and watch that you know was one of my one of my favorite movies that is a love story and people don't th- don't know or realize or think about it, it's a love story holes holes is a love story i've never seen it you never seen holes never you seen know holes. what it is though i know what it okay. is i've never seen it holes is a love story listeners and listen why because this book the uh, about stanley yonetz He's cursed by his great, great, great grandfather, whatever. Okay, so in the very beginning, Stanley's great, great, great grandfather is in love with this chick named Myra. And in order to win her father's affection, he asks for this, um, I don't know if we call her a, a, a witch. I don't really know what she was, but mm-hmm. Madame Zeroni was her name. And he asked her for advice, you know, what can I do? And she's like, take this pig, it's the smallest one, cl- take it up the mountain, let it drink, sing to it every single time, and you'll watch it get bigger. So he takes the pig, and she says, when you're done, you have to come back and get me. Take me up the mountain so I can drink, and you have to sing to me while I drink. Okay. So he does this. A lot of work. Yes. It's a lot of work. <laughs> he does it for I don't know how long, but the pig gets good and fat. He takes it to Myra's father. Unbeknownst to him, someone else is also you know, trying to get at her. He also comes with a giant pig. The pigs weigh exactly the same. Mm-hmm. So he's like, okay, how do we figure it out? So Myra, she picks 
she's like pick a number between one and ten that's how she just yeah wow. dumb girl dumb girl yeah. so she ends up picking the other guy so he stanley yelnats's great great grandfather is upset he leaves town or whatever he never goes back and gets madame's roni so now the family is cursed mm. love story all right so fast forward to shia labeouf's character stanley yelnats the fourth he is in the wrong place wrong time some shoes come up missing he's walking under a bridge the shoes fall down and get him he gets arrested goes to court ends up going to camp whatever so the camp is camp green lake this backstory of camp green lake it used to be a town with a lake that ran right through it and there was a man named sam who lived he lived i think in the town but he would go across the lake to get these onions that he says have healing powers mm. he's a black man so he would bring the onions sell them to the people in the camp and um he was in love with the teacher there she was a white woman and she loved sam back now this is back in the day now so this is forbidden and there was a man named trout walker i think was his name his father owned the lake so he had money and he liked the teacher as well but the teacher didn't like him she liked sam so sam did odd jobs here and there around town or whatever mm -hmm. and he was fixing her schoolhouse and she they end up kissing each other and trout walker saw it so a mob comes to get sam they end up killing sam so the next day um the teacher she goes and kills the sheriff and kisses him after she kills him so then she becomes kissing kate barlow she's like a a vigilante yes yeah. so, so after that after sam was died after sam died the lake dried up and it never rained again so that's the other love story so in the movie it's it's a lot i'm not gonna go on okay people i think i it's found my other co-host for the movie <laughs> review podcast Sorry. but I'm now not... everybody's gonna go out and wanna yeah, watch this movie. Watch i want to go watch this it's movie. a good movie i'm not gonna go on it's a lot but it's a love story y'all find out for yourselves my bad yeah, I, I think know. i'm gonna go out and watch this movie now it's really good and read the book too yeah it's yeah, a book definitely. it's a book too books but uh what book do you read so when I was a teenager, I used to read, not even a teenager, when I was little, going, I used to read all the time. Anything, I will read it. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't have no business, but when I was in high school, I used to read Zane. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have no business, but it was very entertaining. Zane, I read, Jerome I Dickey. Read Zane. But I read, I'm reading Eric Jerome Dickey now, actually. So he has a series, um, Gideon. Are yeah, you, oh, yeah. that's a good series. I'm reading the Gideon series right now. That's a good I'm series. On, um, which one am I reading? There's, there's sleeping with strangers, waking with enemies, mm -hmm. and then there's um, resurrecting midnight. I think that's the one I'm reading. Because okay. there's two, resurrecting midnight and then finding Gideon. Yes. I think I'm reading resurrecting midnight. Okay. Yes. Very good, but very good books. I'm reading um, Air Drum Dickey. J.D. Mason, I also read her. Mm -hmm. Have you ever read anything by yes. her? Very good. I think the best book I read by her was called In On the Eighth Day She Rested. I read mm -hmm. that book twice. It was so good. Excuse me. But um, I like to read entertaining books. Factual books, not nah, don't really hold my interest. Too I'm not much. a big. I'm not. My, my my wife loves the um, the nonfiction. The nonfiction. Yeah. I'm right now finishing up the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. Oh, I've heard of that. Really good series. It's, there's seven. Well, there's really seven and a half books. I say half because he wrote the last, the eighth book last. It kind of fits between uh, book four and five. Okay. But it's a really interesting book series. The Tower series. Yes, yeah, Dark okay. Tower series. The Dark Tower series. Okay. Do you read um James Patterson? I used to. My grandfather loves, I think he has all the books. Mm -hmm. He has all the James Patterson books. So I bought him a Kindle so he can put them all on his little Kindle. I've never read anything about James Patterson, I don't think. I used to. Um, I a, like him. I like Stephen King. I like James Patterson. I've never read nothing by Stephen King. Stephen King is an amazing writer. And I'm sitting here wondering how he comes up with so many books. You got to think everything he's written. He wrote the Carrie. He wrote Carrie. Oh, did he? Yeah, that's his. Ch uh, I believe Children, Children of the, the Corn. Corn. Yeah, that's, that's his. Him. So he's written. Is he still writing? Like he's still putting books out? Or I believe he is. Huh? Yeah, I didn't know that. But Stephen King has been writing forever, and and he wrote it. Yeah, I know that. The Shining. Yep, I know that. Uh, Misery. All these books that became these major movies. movies yeah, I need to read. They it. were all. He's written uh, so many books that people just forget about. I try not to read um, the books that people are crazy about. Mm -hmm. Twilight. No. Yeah. 50 shades of Gr hell no sorry for my language but no i think i read 12 pages of the first 50 shades of gray book mm -hmm. and i was like nah i read zane so this is like dr seuss to me yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that book wasn't yeah I, I was on Aaron jerome dickey for a lot he's a really good writer he is and my favorite book by him is oh my god it wasn't driver it was um the other woman 
Oh, I haven't read that one yet. It's, I, it's on my list, though. My favorite I haven't one. read it. Okay. And I more identify with the lead female character in that. She was um, she was a saxophone player. Oh, okay. I'm a saxophone player. Yep. She is she she her whole her the way she saw things was an amazing characterization of a person in her position. Okay. You have to read that okay. one. The other woman. Chasing Destiny is really good. Chasing Destiny, that sounds familiar. That's the motorcycle where she rides. Ah, she rides I've seen the cover. Okay, yeah. I haven't read it though, but Chasing I've seen, Destiny, I've seen it. Okay. Zonavive. All these books, they're, they're she was in. Um, is that the same character? Yes, from, oh, is. okay, that's what he does. He, okay, he, he, he weaves all the characters in okay. through and through. I gotta and, read like, it. Driver was in, um, uh, was in another one, and and there's a, a portrait that was painted in um, the other woman that's in a different oh, one. So, yeah, okay. all these small little things just it. flow into each it. other. That's how um, JD Mason, so I accidentally read her books in order i didn't know it but she <laughs> she has like four or five books that are intertwined with each other and i accidentally read them all in order the first one i was like i don't know how i feel about this book then i read the second one and you know the story the story goes long but i've read so many books that they started to blend together mm -hmm. and my grandma used to tell me you should write down all the books that you read but uh, of course i never did and part of me wishes i would have because then i can go back and read them again or recommend them to a friend or whatever but yeah, I've just read. I've read so many books. They all blend. You're listening. Out. Read any Omar Tyree? Uh, uh, I don't think I've heard of him. Omar Tyree. So you take. So this, this is my opinion. You okay. take. So you take Air Jerome Dickey and put him in the hood, and you get Omar Tyree. <laughs> and that's what I've always known. He changed his name to the Urban Grid. Like he just. He's. A, he's a. He's an interesting character. Okay. Why well, do? Oh, back to uh uh Air Jerome Dickey. He also wrote Black Panther. He also wrote part of the Black Panther uh the comic script? book. Oh, comic book. I've never read the comic book. Uh the, yeah, he wrote a whole oh, comic book series cool. of that. Okay, now you have to tell me if you say no to this, then I have the right to take your black card. What's up? Have you read? You have to say yes, David. That's the only acceptable answer. The coldest winner ever. I've read it. Did I like it? No. But you've read it. I've read it. Okay, that's all. That's all it's required. That's all it's required. You don't have to like it. Just as long as you read it. Okay, that's. I'll, I'll take that. But yeah, I, I've I've read it. Like I, I was at, at one point in my life, I was reading all the time. I don't have time. To I don't. Read. Ha and that's what I hate. The only time I have time to read is when I'm traveling. So now, Audible is my best friend. Audible. I um. I'm listening to Tiffany Haddish's book on Audible right now, and I pref I really like the. Because I feel like with Audible, I'm, a, I'm giving myself room and space to be distracted because mm -hmm. I can sit the phone down and listen and then go do something else. And I'm not going to be. You're also listening to nonfiction. When it comes to fiction, it Audible. won't happen. You, you, you're in it. You're in okay. the story. So No, no, um, no, no. Fiction. Oh, okay. I'm tracking. I'm yeah, sorry. Tiffany Haddish's book yeah, is yeah, nonfiction. Yeah, yeah, now right. I'm talking about fiction. Okay, all right. You're right. Sorry, I had a, had a brain fart there. Yeah, because <laughs> I like, uh, you'll ride in the car, you'll listen to it, and, okay. and the story just flows, and you'll get it if it's a good writer. Okay. Of course. And it has to be a good narrator. That's so, true. like, with all the, um, the, the um, nonfiction books I read, uh, Damon Johns and, and Charlemagne the God and Kevin Hart, all those books. They voice their, their. How do book. I sign up for that job? I would so, so just, <laughs> narrate, just, narrate, just, narrate a narrate a book. Find somebody who writes a book and narrate it. You can do it. You anybody will pay you to do that. I'm down. And say find somebody who wrote. My wife is writing a book right now. She might get you to do it. Okay, huh? cool. I'll narrate it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that. She got to ask her. Oh, true facts. <laughs> facts. Very true. But um, there's so many like books are have been a big part of my life, mm -hmm. and I think that I anytime that I was. I'll, movies and books so I like to get lost in both mm -hmm. movies and TV shows I get lost in and I, I just I, I feel like I'm part of the mm -hmm. show almost and I, I laugh and I'm, I'm, I could be in a room by myself watching a TV show I'm sitting here Dying. talking and I'm talking like oh you gonna do what what <laughs> yo I'm telling you I was watching um, Lethal Weapon oh, okay. yesterday the show or the, the, the TV okay. show okay uh, and I, then I just I'm watching Lethal Weapon and I'm watching like oh y'all really gonna do that <laughs> y'all just gonna jump out of a plane like like he's gonna, I'm, I'm sitting there having a conversation with the show that's how I was with the first season of Insecure I got so invested in that season uh, I think it's just because I could relate so much and at the time I was texting my husband and I was like yo babe she really about to do this oh my god she just did it oh, no, no. Like, like he was like can you please relax like she's not your homegirl right I remember <laughs> I remember first seeing Easter Ray with the Miss adventures of an awkward black yeah girl. she was on youtube right yes yeah, okay. my older sister tamisha shout out to tamisha 
she's one who put me on to that. And it was, I started watching it and watching it and watching it. And then I saw her grow. Mm -hmm. And then now she has her shows, mm -hmm. multiple. Yeah. She's at every award show. And just watching her on Instagram and just it's her so energy cool. is awesome. It's so cool to see them start with their humble beginnings and then watch them blossom. Right. I think it's really cool. Right. Like um, Kevin Hart was just talking about how he's trying to build these platforms for, for black people people or people of color in general mm -hmm. to be able to stand up and be in the limelight because for many 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 years we haven't been mm -hmm. heartbeat productions he's he's doing it there's other producers out there doing it we have black panther a whole black cast mm -hmm. black director and i what i what i hate to see with that are people who sit back and say well the studio was a white owned studio does it matter you you've been you've been we've been harping on representation mm -hmm. and and being able to see ourselves in TV and film in positive right. in positive places and now since a studio wasn't black you're upset about it it's just one of those things where you're never people are always going to find something to complain about so you always. just got to you know whatever can't just, please everybody right you ignore them and keep it moving can't please everybody yeah and right now, do you are you into the whole Marvel universe thing that has gone no, on? No, okay. So I was not into comic books or anything like mm -hmm. that, but I do enjoy the, the movies whenever they come out. I like to watch them. Okay. I like Marvel. I don't really care for DC. Right, right. Yeah. Nobody. I like DC on the TV shows. I did like um, Black Panther, or not Black Panther, Black, Black Lightning. Lightning. I did like Black Lightning. There, there was a couple things in there. That I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, but kind of cheesy. Yeah, but all of all, but it's a comic book into a TV. Exactly. Show. So, but what I didn't like about that is that so. Every other DC character that came on to the CW, mm -hmm. same network mm -hmm. as them. So you had um, the first one that came out was Supergirl or Flash. Neither. The first one was a Green Arrow. Oh, I forgot about that. Green Arrow came out first. After Green Arrow was Flash, and after Flash it was Supergirl. They all introduced each other. So Green Arrow came out, and then he introduced the Flash. Mm. Then I, because the Flash came out there before Barry Allen came out to uh, Starling City before he became the Flash and all that. And then when Supergirl came out, in a way they kind of, they they she came up by herself, but then they brought the Flash with her and they brought the Green Arrow with her. They never did a crossover with Black Lightning. Why do you think that is? No idea. Mm. I'm not gonna, I'm, I don't want to speculate, speculate yeah. because it's only the first season. Right. So it could maybe next season Black Light is going yeah, to drop true. in the Star City. The only thing I thought was like, come on now, about Black, Black, about Black Lightning was his own children couldn't <laughs> recognize him. Like the only thing that hit him, disguised his identity, was the well, voice. Well, well, they also <laughs> said that what he would do was he would emit energy from his face, so it looked like you're looking at his face, like you're looking at light, light. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So that's what. So we didn't. So in the show, oh, okay. That's how they explained it. Because I, I was like, are you kidding me? You don't know Little that's goggles, your dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what got me is he's the only six foot eight black exactly. man walking around. <laughs> like, but overall, right. I, I do like the show. But it's, yeah. it's a good show. I love the history that mm -hmm. they talk about in the show. Uh, the first episode, the first name to hear is Harriet Tubman. I mean, it's like I don't think I've seen the first episode because I watched. I started watching it at I was at a friend's house, and mm -hmm. I think he was on episode two, and I just picked up from and there. His oldest daughter was arrested in the first episode for protesting. And they started calling her Harriet. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's a, it's a really good show. The music in it is amazing. Good, yeah. It's a really good music. I like the it. The women in the show are beautiful. Yeah. It, I mean, I like I like the show. It's I like it too. I enjoy and I it. think I, um, I was worried about it in the beginning. Really? Because, because um, we also have uh, Luke Cage. Oh, I haven't watched that one. It's horrible. Is it, it? is horrible. I keep hearing it's so good. I oh, keep hearing no. it's slow, but it's really good. I'm not a fan. Okay, I haven't. And I think mainly the reason I'm not a fan, I found this out after I wasn't a fan, <laughs> is that the director of it is Lucy Liu. Lucy Liu from... Yeah, I know Lucy Liu. Yeah, all the, all the stuff mm -hmm. that she, nobody can ever remember her really being in. Charlie's Angels, she was in that for a little while. She was in Kill Bill. She, yeah, she was in Kill well, so. She got killed. Yeah. <laughs> Then she was on Sherlock or Sherlock Holmes. Oh TV yeah, show. yeah, yeah. She's been on that, but I don't even think she can act in that. I just, I don't, I don't think she can act. Maybe okay. she can direct. Maybe she can, and I just don't like her style. Maybe, maybe, but I'm not a fan of it. Okay. Oh, I just thought about something. Have What's you up? seen Black Klansman? 
I have not. You haven't seen I, it. Yet. I, we we have been so busy that I have not had a chance to go it. back and see it. Um, I liked it for considering the fact that it was Spike Lee. That's my unpopular opinion. I don't like Spike Lee. <laughs> Sorry, but um, I thought it was good. It Spike was good. Lee is more of a Sundance film type. Yes, that's exactly what he is. Mm-hmm. I will get yeah. so like the show. She's got to have it on Netflix. I could not get down with that. I tried really hard to like that yeah. show. I really did try, but I'm sorry. I cannot get behind promoting women to have multiple sex partners mm. at one time. I just cannot. Get mm. Well, that's the thing. A lot of people talk about with feminism is that. So um, they believe a lot of people believe that you cannot. I don't know how to word this you know, where it actually sounds right. So by by saying that that's wrong, then you are anti-feminist. I'm not saying it's wrong, and I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying it's wrong for me. Right, and I get that. Like I said, <laughs> we were talking about Partisan Fontaine and the song that yes, he had. Yes, And there's a line in there where he was saying that, I just want to keep my daughter off, off, the, the, pole. off the pole in the VH1 right. show. And he's a writer for Cardi B. And so... I mean, the question, she was on the pole and on the VH1 right, show. <laughs> right. All right. And so the question I had was, can you... Can you still like I I, I call myself I support women mm-hmm. period mm-hmm. I submit I su- truly support black women mm-hmm. and but can I call myself supporting black women and saying that the women that I don't respect not saying I don't respect the women that do those things but I wouldn't want my daughter to do those I things. mean and that's that's fair to say because in saying that you have to. Th- in saying that you don't want that for your daughter, it's be, it's you understanding what happens in that circle, in that world. Mm-hmm. She's going to be subjected to a lot of things that you don't want your daughter subjected to. Right. So, I mean, I think that that's common sense and, you know, that's fair to say. It doesn't mean that you have to disrespect the women that do those jobs. but And it's also one of those things where... I always make, I always joke. I was like, if this military thing don't work, I'm gonna start stripping. It's always a joke, but like, I think some women look at stripping as like a last resort option. Like, right. if I ain't got nothing else, I can do this. Well, some people think they can, but well, I worked as the bartender in a strip club in California mm-hmm. for a while, and I have friends that were strippers. Mm-hmm. I have, and the strip club we worked at, it was split. So you walk in the front door. Women went to the left to see the male strippers. Men went to the right to see the women strippers. So you take your wife, go, you all go together, and y'all split <laughs> up at the door. And I remember I had friends that were that were, that were strippers, and it, and I didn't didn't have anything against them. I didn't have any problem with them, but it, I, I don't. I wouldn't want that for my daughter. Yeah. I wouldn't want that for my sister. I wouldn't want that for a close friend of mine. And and, and I don't think that I am wrong in saying that. No. But, yo, we have talked about so many different topics today. time to go? Yeah, we're going to shut it down. Sorry I wasted so much time talking about holes. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry about it. No. I got into it. Well, I'm going to go watch it. Okay, yes, please watch it. But we want to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and give a little time for you real quick. So where can people find you? You can find me on... um, (laughs) <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at Theta underscore Nairi. Um, you can follow me on Snapchat if you choose. Um, Theta Nairi is my name on Snapchat. You can follow me on Twitter, <laughs> your mom's a hoe underscore. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also find me on Facebook. My name is Theta Shaw on Facebook. And you can also find her at For the Culture Podcast, which is going to which is yes. on everywhere where you find podcasts. Yes. So just check us out. You'll see us on our, our website. It's coming up soon. But we're also on Facebook at For the Culture. Right. We're on Instagram at For the Culture. Culture. And we're on Twitter at For the Culture. And I hope you guys got to learn a little bit more about me. If there's still some questions you want to ask me. DM me and I'll answer them for you. So everybody, we want to say thank you and welcome Theta to Yay! the group. All right, y'all. So we're going to go ahead and leave here. Thanks for listening. Bye. Peace.